Hi guys, Anna is here and this A-level biology masterclass I cover topics in less than 10 minutes so please press the likes and subscribe to my channel to get more of my videos and in this video we're going to discuss the structure of the antibodies and their functions in organisms. So let's jump into it. Grab a paper and you can draw your notes alongside with me. Antibodies are important proteins which are part of the primary immunity and which are produced by plasma cells. If you're not sure what plasma cells are, I'm going to link my other video in the link below. Antibody is an example of a quaternary protein, meaning that it's made out of four different polypeptides. Remember guys, the definition of quaternary protein is the protein that has several polypeptides and or prosthetic groups, which are non-protein groups. And again, if you're not sure what quaternary proteins are, I have another video that I'm gonna link in the link above. Okay, so let's start drawing an antibody. So I want you to draw kind of two lines like this, which you can see, and then in between, kind of to mark that region differently, I'm going to make it in a different color. So this is, will become important in a moment. And then after that, we're going to draw two further lines on the side, which are not going to be quite connected yet, but they are connected in the antibody by specific bonds, which we'll learn in a moment. So I would draw something like that, right? And now let's go, get into labeling this antibody. Okay. So, as we said, antibody is made of four different polypeptides, which um, if we start from the two middle polypeptides, those represent heavy chains. So we have the two of those. And just to clarify with my laser, you can see that it's kind of the entire structure starting from the top to the bottom, linked by those green regions. Okay, obviously they're not green in real life, but for the purpose of this diagram. Then the second part of the antibodies are the light chains, which are those much shorter. Those are the two other polypeptides, okay? And in, to in together, they make this overall structure of an antibody. Furthermore, antibodies have two antigen binding sites, which are formed kind of as part of the heavy chain and the light chain at the top. It's almost like a groove that is going to be sitting there. So they're called antigen binding sites, and antibody has two of those. And this site will be complementary to a particular antigen or pathogen. So when an antibody binds to a pathogen or an antigen, it's forming an antigen antibody complex. In addition, antibody has a further re region that is called a hinge region, and in my diagram I have drawn it in a green color. The purpose of hinge region there is to provide the flexibility for antibody to bind to an antigen. As you can imagine, binding of antibody to antigen is quite a random process, so it might bind antigen at different uh, angles, so therefore hinge region provides that flexibility. Okay, next part of the antibody is the disulfide bridges that are present between the, the light chains and the heavy chains, as you can see on my diagram there, and specifically in the hinge region as well. So that gives extra strength to the antibody as well and gives it certain 3D structure, which is important. Right, so now I want you to separate antibody in two parts, like this, with a dashed line. So the top line, the top half of the antibody is called a variable region, and then the bottom half is called a constant region. So the variable region is the one that changes a lot, as you can appreciate, antigen binding site have to vary between different antibodies because they're going to be complementary to different antigens. Constant region primarily remains constant and that particular part binds to macrophages or it's already bound on the uh, mature B lymphocytes as antibody receptors. And this is everything, guys, you need to know about the antibody structure. I appreciate that there are probably a bit more few things to learn compared to other topics, but this is everything you need to know for antibody structure. Okay, so now we learned about the antibody structure, we need to relate it to the function it has in the organisms. Antibodies have different functions, but in this video I'm going to focus on five main functions of antibodies. Number one being agglutination. I would recommend drawing little doodles and diagrams for this topic because I think if you have them all in on one page, it will really help you to learn this topic. So agglutination means that when antibody binds to antigens or pathogen, they basically 
clump them together. And if they're clumped together, that means it creates a signal for phagocytes to come and carry out phagocytosis of these pathogens and antibodies together. The second function of antibodies is linked to agglutination, but it has a different name called opsonization. Opsonization means that rather than kind of clumping the pathogens and antigens together, the antibody will just mark a particular pathogen again for phagocytes, so it will create a signal for phagocytes to come and clear out the marked pathogen. Okay, so to be honest with you guys, opsonization and agglutination, they're quite linked together, but these two processes have two different names, so just know which one which means what. Okay, we get to the function number three, which I called inhibition of binding to a receptor. So some pathogens, such as virus, they need to bind to a cellular receptor to be able to infect our cells. So if I just draw a eukaryotic body cell with a receptor on top, that receptor would normally be complementary to a certain virus, for example, or even a toxin. So what antibodies do, they bind to a virus and, or toxin, and that would prevent the binding of either virus or the toxin. So if that binding is prevented, then it means the virus, for example, it won't be able to infect a cell by a process of endocytosis. It's very similar to toxin in a sense that toxin would no longer be able to bind to the receptor, so it won't have its toxic effect on the cell. This brings us to function number four, called neutralization. Again, it's linked to the toxins, and it's probably very similar to the previous function. But in this sense, so the antibody binds to a toxin instead of uh, a pathogen. So, for example, bacteria as pathogens, they release toxins, which can make many organisms ill. And in this case, the antibody is called antitoxin, and then the antitoxin binding to toxin creates a complex together. This brings us to the final function, number five, binding to fragella, which is probably my favorite. So in this case, what happens is that the antibodies will bind to the bacterial fragellum, making it less mobile. So then it's less likely to go and invade different tissues and to make organisms ill. Okay, guys, this brings me to the end of my video. I hope you really enjoyed this video, learned a lot. Uh, I think antibody is quite an interesting topic. I would really appreciate if you like my video, press the like button, uh, you know, subscribe to my channel. The more subscribers I get, uh, the more videos I can publish. And please spread the word to your friends and um, colleagues who might be interested in watching this. And I will see you in my next video. Thank you so much. Goodbye.